about 12 minutes after 8 and it's time for us to focus on your health. On Tuesdays on our lifestyle, we look at your health. And today we're talking about the cleft lip and palate. And joining me on the set is uh, Dr. Esten Jeroge. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Esther Jeroge is a regional director for Smile Train. Yes. And maybe for the benefit of those who may not know what Smile Train is all about, what is that? Smile Train is an international children's charity dedicated to one problem, cleft lip and palate. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last 15 years, we have been treating cleft lip and the treatment around cleft lip and palate. And we partner with local hospitals so that we provide them with uh, resources and they are able to provide the treatment free of charge to the patients. Okay. Now, in case you're at home and you don't know what cleft lip is and maybe you're wondering, we'll have some pictures rolling as we continue with the interview and also give you details of how you can access some of this information and where you can access it. So in case you don't know what cleft lip, lip is and palate, don't worry, we'll have some pictures uh, rolling as we go along. So how long has this organization been going on? A smile train started in 1999 in the U.S. and here in Africa, our first partnership was in Kenya with Get in 2002, mm -hmm. and our programs rapidly grew from 2008. So we currently have 18 partnerships here in in Kenya. Okay, yes. my assumption would be for there to be an organization specifically for cleft lip and palate, it must be then quite uh, a huge problem or a huge. I mean, they, they, there's a lot of cases. Yes, there is. Globally, it's estimated about 170,000 patients are born every year with cleft lip and palate. The incidence is one in a thousand babies born. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we have about uh, 14 million babies being born every year. Mm -hmm. And when you do that math, it comes to about 1,400 patients every year. Take uh, how many? 25 city shuttle buses load them up with people that's the number of people who are born every that's year huge. yes every that's year a huge cleft number lip um that's so that we understand what exactly is cleft lip cleft lip is a congenital malformation it happens when the baby is being formed in the mother's stomach from the fifth to the eighth week that's when even the mother does not know that she's pregnant and it it's a cut or a tear on the upper lip that's a cleft lip and a gap in the roof of the mouth that's a cleft palate mm -hmm. yes when you say a gap in the roof of the mouth is it like a hole or what what, what is a gap on the roof because i imagine the roof is just you know where you touch with your tongue the yes pipe. yes mm -hmm. when you touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue mm -hmm. it's completely sealed with a baby who has a cleft palate there's a hole such that when they take their food or milk sometimes it comes out through the nose because there's a communication between the mouth and the nose, which should not be there naturally. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a right. cleft Do palate. Do you know what the causes are for cleft lip and the palate? The causes, uh, there is no direct cause, but there are associated risk factors. One of the causes that is, um, the risk factors that is directly linked is the lack of folate when the mother is pregnant. And the government has been doing a campaign to get pregnant women to take folate very early in their pregnancies mm -hmm. because it's associated with many uh, congenital malformations. Mm -hmm. There are other risk factors like uh, exposure to toxins like lead which is in paints, um, <coughs> exposure to industrial toxins, smoking while pregnant, taking alcohol while pregnant and in some families it's passed down in the generation like if your father has a cleft palate mm -hmm. or a cleft lip the likelihood of the child having one is higher than in the normal person who does not have one mm -hmm. a cleft lip or palate. Okay and there we have the pictures uh, just showing you some uh, some of the cleft lip um, that you would see and uh, this organization is dedicated to correct that. Is it possible for a mother to know uh, their child has a cleft lip before birth? Currently, with the advancement in ultrasound, it is possible to know that, especially when they do the 3D ultrasonography. Mm -hmm. So they are able to, do, to know right from maybe the age of 16 weeks or 20 weeks that mm -hmm. the baby has a cleft lip or cleft palate. Okay. Yes. So it is possible. And are there any corrective measures that one takes if the baby is still in the womb, or do you have to wait for them to be born? Then are there, in Africa and in the developing world, there are none we are still you still have to wait for the baby to be born and still wait for another three months for the baby to to be safe to undergo surgery mm -hmm. yes so a and cleft lip 
will be repaired at three months and a cleft palate from nine months onwards. Okay. Now, once you talk about the repair, is this repairing to have it normal? Yes. And uh, does it become completely normal? It does become completely normal. For some patients, they may require other surgeries later on, uh, secondary surgeries, depending on how their lip is growing versus the scar that has formed after the lip has been repaired. Mm -hmm. But for many patients, after the primary repair, they are normal. Okay. Yes. Now, what is the procedure for repair? Let's start with the lip, with the cleft lip. The cleft lip is a surgical procedure. It is a major operation, but it's a simple operation. In the hands of an expert, it takes as little as 45 minutes, mm -hmm. and the baby is transformed immediately. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, with the palate? With the cleft palate, it's also a surgical repair, still a major surgery that needs to be done by an expert in a hospital that is safe. And it also takes uh, ranging from 45 minutes to two hours, depending on how severe the palate is. Mm -hmm. And again, the change is immediate. As soon as the patient heals, the difference is very obvious. It's, it's, it's obvious and visible. Yes. Uh, does this require a, a specialized surgeon who's just you know, specialized in that particular area of surgery? Yes, it does. We are working with uh, plastic surgeons, maxillofacial surgeons, some ENT surgeons, and there are general surgeons who have gone further and had the hands-on training on cleft lip and palate repair. Mm -hmm. So it does require specialized training. Not just any person can do the operation. Mm -hmm. yes. Now we've mentioned that uh, a baby needs to be three months after they're born for them to have the repair done. Yes. Uh, what about those who possibly did not even know what it was and maybe are much older? Is there hope for them? Yes, there is. We are treating from three months to 85 years. Recently, we had an 85-year-old woman in Uganda wow. treated for cleft lip, and they have lived all their life with cleft lip, mm -hmm. and it's a devastating life to live. Mm -hmm. and, but our aim is to reach them as young as possible because the outcome and the quality of life is better when they are treated as young as possible. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, the, the, normally you'll find that some of this information and some of these organizations are concentrated within urban areas. Mm -hmm. Are you reaching the, the rural areas? Yes, we are. What we have done, as you would know, most of these specialists are in the urban centers. Mm -hmm. And what they have done is some of them have had hospitals outside of Nairobi where they visit occasionally to uh, do the surgeries. And we have a partner who is going through the county hospitals having uh, cleft camps in one week having 30, 40 patients come to say in Migori, like in November he will be in Migori, and treating them in one go, and then going back again after two or three months and seeing the ones he treated before and um, having new ones come on board. Because we are trying to get the service as close to the patient as possible without compromising on their safety. Okay, and how do these camps work? I mean, is there awareness? Do people know you're coming? Where do you set up camp? Are you in hospitals? How does one access? We do create awareness, mainly through radio, because most of the rural Kenya listens to radio. Right. And we do have posters that uh, we have been distributing. We have been working with the Miss World franchise, mm -hmm. and through the Miss World Kenya and the beauty queens in their counties, they have been distributing posters in their counties, working with the county governments, and having these posters in hospitals, speaking to schools, to churches. And um, when a camp is being set up, we have uh, a lot of information going out saying that the camp is going to happen this place and this is the time it's going to happen. Most of the partnerships that we have are doing the surgeries 24-7. You walk in and the surgery will be booked at an appropriate time, mm -hmm. depending on the fitness of the patient for surgery, that is. Mm -hmm. How, what about access? How much access is there in terms of do you just walk in and have it done? Do you need to book appointments? Like any surgery, you need to be assessed that you're fit for the surgery. So when you walk in, they will assess you. Are you fit for surgery? And if you are, most of the times you will not go back home. You will be booked in and your surgery will be done. Sometimes because maybe you because these children end up, many of them come to us when their weight is not good or their HB is not good because they are not feeding properly. They may have to be sent home to build up on the HB. Like I said, we don't want to compromise on the safety of the patient. But most of the time, this surgery is being done as soon as the patient shows up. As soon as they, as soon as they walk in. Okay, now there's the, there's the issue of, um, I know traditionally we had children who are born 
different mm -hmm. categorized to a certain area and cleft lip i'm sure would probably have its own myths yes have you come across some of those myths there are many there are mm -hmm. so many Michael. what are some of them some of them are that the mother was promiscuous during pregnancy that's mm -hmm. why that happened some of them are that god is angry with them for something they did their relatives cast them some of them are uh, the father is the one who brought in the problem and we have had mothers who have abandoned their babies we've had fathers who have left their families because of the condition mainly because people do not understand what it is and what is happening and that it can be corrected mm -hmm. yes how do you because there is the side of surgery where you correct the lip but mm -hmm. there's that angle mm -hmm. of correcting society and our frame of mind mm -hmm. does smile uh, tra smile train work on that do you do you try and demystify some of these things yes through the avenues that we have uh, through the many ambassadors that we are working with, through community health workers, through, uh, like I said, radio interviews and speaking about cleft lip and pilot, mm -hmm. through such avenues as this, uh, coming on TV and talking about it, we are trying to, you know, actually we are telling the public that one, it's an act of God. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong you did. Mm -hmm. There is a, it's not a curse. It could happen to you, it could happen to me, it could happen to that person. And it is correctable, 100%. And you can live a normal life mm -hmm. beyond a cleft lip. All right. In case you're joining us now, with me in the studio is Dr. Esther Njeroge, and she's the Regional Director for Smile Train, an organization that mainly deals with cleft lip and palate uh, surgery. And today we are looking at how uh, that can be done and also access, mainly access, especially to those who may not be aware. There is uh, one of the reasons why you'll find our health sector suffering uh, today, Dr. Esther, and you, I stand to be corrected, is the element of cost. Mm -hmm. With cleft lip, is there, now and with smile train, is there an element of cost and how much, if there is, because that's one of the impediments that one may have? Smile train is dedicated to treating cleft lip and palate patients free of charge. From the moment you walk into the hospital to the moment you leave the hospital, you pay nothing. Be it a private hospital, be it a mission hospital, be it a government hospital, you do not pay for the surgery because we fund that. That's why we are here. So are you in different hospitals? How do I know where you are? Because I may walk into a hospital mm -hmm. and find a private doctor who is going to charge me for the surgery. Yes. Uh, but how do I know where uh, um, Smile Train is? We are working very hard to get our posters and the information out there of the hospitals we are partnered with. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the surgery is by specialized uh, surgeons and therefore we can't be in every hospital. We have 18 partnerships in Kenya. Mm -hmm across the country and through and the number that you will provide later on mm -hmm. when you call our office we're able to direct you to the hospital that is closest to you and if you're not able to afford the transport to the hospital we are able to arrange that as an office okay remember if you'd like to ask any questions maybe there are some areas that you feel we've not covered and you'd like to uh, find out the phone number is going to be displayed on your screen and you're free to call and uh, we'll have dr Esther Jeroge address your question in regards to cleft lip and pallet are you available in government hospitals or is it in private hospitals we are available in some government hospitals mm -hmm. we are at mbu pgh we are at nyeri pgh we are at machakos level five uh, moi teaching and referral hospital we we have tried to be in every hospital where these are specialist who is working in the hospital mm -hmm. yes let's talk about the effect that smile train brings and just by virtue of just the name smile mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the results you've seen after a child has you know undergone through the surgery and maybe even an adult it's it's a heartwarming moment to encounter a patient a mother who has been suffering because their child has a cleft and a few moments later when the child is brought out of theatre and it's ha they're handed over to them, most of them break down and cry. Mm -hmm. It's really emotional because they cannot imagine their child could have lived that condition for the rest of their lives, either because they did not know it could be treated or because they did not have the funds to have the surgery done. Mm -hmm. So they are really grateful and they all go on to become smile train ambassadors. We have a lot of patients being referred to us by other patients. It's beautiful. It's, you have to experience it, Michael. You have to. <laughs> okay. And uh, Smile Train, by virtue of the fact, is offering free medical services to those who need it. Mm -hmm. How do you go about your funding? Like I said, we are an international charity. 
based in the US. Mm -hmm. Our fundraising is um, handled in the US. We have also approached a few companies here to uh, support our cause, and that's where the, sources, the funds come from, from individuals in the US. You and me, giving you give your five, I give my 10, mm -hmm. and together we are able to support this cause that has treated one million patients across the globe in the last 15 years. Okay. Uh, there's a lady by the name Jessica here who says that she's been to a public hospital mm -hmm. and uh, they seem not to give her a solution for that. Mm -hmm. uh, how should she address it? I think she says she's an eldorate. Has she been to the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital? I'm not sure which hospital she went to, but maybe you can just let us know if somebody's in that kind of a situation, uh -huh. how do they go about it? Jessica, let her call the number that we'll, you will display later, mm -hmm. and we'll give her the solution. Okay. We always and for anybody else patient. who may not have access to a phone, maybe they're watching, but they may not be able what, What's the procedure? Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to show all the hospitals that we are in um, later on, mm -hmm. but uh, we are also on social media. If somebody has access to social media, we, ha we have our Facebook page, Smile Train Africa. Mm -hmm. We are on Twitter, at Smile Train Africa. There is no A at the end. And uh, basically, most of, as we are going on with our work, we are finding that many hospitals are getting to know about it through our efforts mainly. Mm -hmm. And they are able to refer the patients and tell them, you can go to Kijabe, you can go to Eldoret, you can go to Nyeri, and the treatment will be okay. available. On some of the pictures we have, and uh, they are displayed now, maybe you can just explain to us what that is uh, for the benefit of those who may be watching. Um, the photo that was there right before, that is a unilateral cleft lip and palate. As you can see, it was going all the way in. Mm -hmm. These photos are showing how you feed a cleft palate patient. Okay. Like I said, many patients are coming to us malnourished. They have, they have not been feeding well because they, it's difficult to feed the patient and they are not able to take as much. There's a position that you're supposed to put the baby, they're supposed to feed seated, not lying down like, like, like Would babies. this be the correct position, the, the one that was displayed? No, that would not be the correct position. The correct mm -hmm. position would be the baby propped up and then you have to express the milk into the mouth of the baby. Mm -hmm. Many of them are not able to create that vacuum to pull out the milk. Mm -hmm. And you have to take a cup and a spoon, express your milk into a cup and spoon, and feed the baby with a cup and spoon. Okay. Uh, we also have another picture there that looks like uh, almost a combination of cleft lip and palate. And bilateral, it's both sides. Wow. Yes. That's so this would be, you'd, there would be a hole coming right from the nose going down to the throat? Right from out here mm -hmm. all the way to the throat. Mm -hmm. It's completely open. Isn't that uh, potentially uh, a, a sea for bacteria to breed and bring about other uh, infections? Yes. Cleft lip and palate patients have a lot of complications. Uh, one of them is recurrent infections, chest infections, throat infections. Like you said, it's, a, it's an open airway that is not supposed to be open. Mm. So there's a lot of bacteria going in and they come with infections. And mm. that's why we are trying, we, are, we want to treat them as early as possible to avoid these complications. They have problems with speaking because uh, when it's for you to have normal speech, your roof needs to be complete. When it's open, you have them speaking ha, 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 and you can't understand, understand what they're right. saying. Okay. Yes. We also have another picture there. Is that now the correct way of breastfeeding or is that still wrong? Because you mentioned they need to be upright. Yes, they need to be upright. What they're showing there is that when, you, when the baby is feeding, there's a lot of air that is going into the stomach. Mm -hmm. And for many of them, the baby will fall asleep uh, you assume the baby is full, but it's because they got tired of suckling and they are full of air. So you have to keep bapping the baby, keep mm -hmm. putting the baby to your, to your shoulder and rubbing their back so that the air can come out. Mm -hmm. It's a tedious process, but the good news is that it will be repaired. It can be repaired. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can see there, uh, is that now milk going to the lungs? Yes. It is possible for the milk to go into the lungs okay. and get an infection. Through the airwaves? It, through the open. You see, your lungs are through the nose. The mm -hmm. communication is through the nose. Mm -hmm. When it's open, the milk can go into the airway instead of going into the stomach and can get into the lungs and get an infection. What are some of the dangers you'd have uh, when now the milk goes to the lungs? Because that sounds quite uh, dangerous. The worst danger is that a patient could die. We have, it's estimated that one in 10 cleft palate patients die before their age, the age of one year. Mm -hmm. And 
that is the most devastating of the dangers. The mm. others are having recurrent pneumonias and having recurrent chest infections. Okay, so just a quick reminder to mothers that uh, yeah. now this is this uh, the, the quick... That the, is the correct. correct position. Okay. With the baby seated up so that they are taking less air into the stomach mm -hmm. and they are also, it's easier for them to get the milk into the mouth. Okay, and uh, you mentioned that they're not able to, su to suckle, to, 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 you know, create that vacuum to mm -hmm. pump. Mm -hmm. um, how does that, one overcome that? One of the ways to overcome that is to help the baby by the mother pressing her breast mm -hmm. when, we have another when position feeding. There. Yes, mm -hmm. when feeding, so you press so that the milk is coming out faster than a normal baby would suckle out. The other alternative is to express the milk and use a cup and spoon mm -hmm. to feed. Mm -hmm. The other alternative is to use a feeding bottle, but we discourage that because of the risk of developing diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And we ask that if you're going to use a bottle, it has to be properly sterilized. Mm -hmm. It has to be boiled for um, about 10 minutes mm -hmm. for it to be properly clean. But because we know most of these patients are coming from a very poor background, mm -hmm. we completely discourage the use of feeding bottles and we ask you to use a cup and spoon. Okay. Now, for the younger children and especially in regards to the palate, mm -hmm. one may not be able to tell, especially, you know, uh, as soon as they're born because their mouths are closed. Mm -hmm. uh, would you encourage parents to be very uh, cautious and check quickly or are there ways of telling? There are ways of telling. The first one is at the hospital. The nurse their normal training is they check for congenital malformations mm -hmm. and by running a finger on the roof of the mouth mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell whether there's a hole or not mm -hmm. uh, the mother can also do that by themselves one of the ways that the mothers notice after they have left the hospital is when the baby is feeding mm -hmm. and milk is coming out through the nose then you may suspect that there is a hole and you need to take the patient the baby back to the hospital and our professional will confirm whether there is a hole or not so it is okay for a mother to run their finger at the upper side of the the, the baby just to confirm yes when they're still young yes because one might feel like that is a bit strange i can see now there maybe the baby is being bapped yes okay and uh, they're bapping i guess is just uh, like any other baby any other baby except for these babies it has to be very frequent after every five minutes the baby has been feeding you bump them so the air come they take in more air than the normal baby mm -hmm. normal baby you bump them at the end of the feed these ones every five minutes you bump the baby so that they are able to take in more food more okay. what are some of the info what are some of the information you wish mothers would know when they mm -hmm. come to you mm -hmm. uh, or when they come to the organization that mm -hmm. uh, is more or less like common knowledge but maybe it's not that common um one of them is feeding you will find babies who are one kilo and they are three months old the mother has been at home with the baby the baby is not feeding well they are not seeking for help and this baby has just been losing weight losing weight losing weight by the time they are coming to us mm -hmm. we there's a, lo a long journey to building up their weight before the surgery can be done that's one of the common things that we would want the mothers to know before they come to the anything hospital. else apart from feeding general care maybe we would also want them to know that a, fish, a baby with a cleft lip and palate is like any other child the only difference is they have a, a gap in their lip take care of that child like any other baby that you have had before or mm -hmm. any other baby that you have seen take them for immunization for example we are having mothers who are coming the baby has never been immunized because they have been hiding this baby away at home mm -hmm. it's common knowledge that a baby should go for immunization take your baby to the hospital you mentioned speech that can be affected by some of these congenital uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. um, are these now at an advanced stage? Because obviously when the child is very small, they mm -hmm. may not be speaking, but when they're small, is it possible to identify maybe sounds they make that would make you aware? Speech is normally affected after the age of two years because that's when normal speech develops. And that's when you will notice uh, if a baby's cleft palate is not repaired before the age of two years, they will develop deformed speech. And mm -hmm. even if the cleft is repaired after that, mm -hmm. they may need to have some therapy to have that speech corrected. Mm -hmm. Or they, it may correct, autocorrect through uh, practice. So the speech is after two years. Our aim is to treat these patients before they reach that stage. All right. There's Monica via Twitter who says that her child is uh, 
three weeks old mm -hmm. and she's not sure if this is a cleft lip or it's just the way the baby is formed how does one know if it's maybe not that advanced i'm mm -hmm. sure there's the one that you can tell there's something wrong mm -hmm. but there are those that may be not fully a cleft lip so she's wondering whether it's just a condition or a maybe just the way the baby looks a cleft lip could be as small as a dimple the normal lip has a direct line a complete line from one end to the other the only dip is in the middle mm -hmm. if the baby has any uh, discontinuation from the straight line it could be a cleft lip it could be a very minor one that requires a very minor surgery but they need to be assessed at the nearest hospital then she can be told whether it's a cleft lip or it's the way the baby is are all all cleft lips are repairable only by surgery yes okay there is no other middle uh, ground it ha all has to be surgery it has to be surgery okay yes. all right uh, now in terms of uh, we we're talking about the funding for smile train mm -hmm. and uh, how do you go about you know your awareness campaign mm -hmm. especially in the rural areas because mm -hmm. you mentioned I, you mentioned you're on twitter you're on facebook mm -hmm. social media which is really an urban setup yes uh, how do you do it apart from radio stations mm -hmm. in the uh, in the rural areas through posters mm -hmm. we have posters that have the before and after photos of the patients very simple and easy to comprehend even if you don't read you can actually see and then we have the list of the hospitals where you can access and it says the surgery is free of charge mm -hmm. and then we have our contact so that if you're in doubt you can call us mm -hmm. and we can get uh, give you information on the nearest hospital where you can be a seen by a okay doctor. we've talked about the the degree of the lip what about the palate are there also different degrees and different types of uh, palates yes there are uh, you can have a cleft of only the soft palate which is the back of the mouth we, that is more is more difficult to diagnose and really requires a specialist to say there is a palate and this would normally be identified incidentally maybe the baby had gone for um, normal checkup and the doctor is checking the throat and they notice the, there's a split in the back. Mm -hmm. the, then the hard palate can either have one side which is unilateral or both sides which is bilateral. Uh, isolated palate which means there is only the hole in the roof of the mouth but the outside is complete is not very common but it happens. Most of the times when the palate is involved the lip is also involved. So the mother will come to you because of the lip and then the doctor will notice the palate is also involved. Okay, how important is diet uh, for a pregnant mother to avoid even this kind of uh, condition? Extremely important. Like I said, lack of folate is a direct link with occurring of cleft lip or cleft palate. And folate is found in your diet. It is found in supplements. And therefore, you will find uh, cleft lip occurring in the very poor patients because of poor diet you will find it occurring in young mothers who are hiding the pregnancy and therefore have not been feeding well mm -hmm. it's diet is very important not just for cleft lip and palate but for other malformations the general okay. health of the baby yeah, yes. what, what what foods does one get for it um, the green vegetables um, mainly mm -hmm. um, eggs okay. I think and uh, one of the things that is associated with pregnancy is mm -hmm. cravings and mm -hmm. i think from scientists uh, mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. a craving is probably your body telling it's deficient mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. does uh, lack of folate mm -hmm. uh, create these cravings i'm not sure the cravings are about lacking folate mm -hmm. it's more about lacking the micronutrients the calcium and the, yes mm -hmm. and the like mm -hmm. and but that is also an indicator that if you're lacking one, the likelihood of you lacking the others are very high. So mm -hmm. if you're having cravings during pregnancy, it's good to go have yourself be given the supplements. Actually, it's not about having cravings. It's about when you get pregnant, start with the supplements. If you're planning a pregnancy, start having the supplements. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, one of the things that would hinder one from having a healthy diet is mm -hmm. down to cost. And sometimes we imagine that a healthy diet mm -hmm. must cost. Is mm -hmm. that necessarily true? No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Ve green vegetables are grown in your backyard. Nowadays they are being grown in bottles. They are being grown in gunias where you put, you know, all those new innovations where you don't have to have a whole shamba in your backyard to to have the vegetables 
it's not costly to have. Actually, healthy diet is cheaper than the unhealthy one that we eat or meat right. every day, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's one just being creative yes. uh, with how they get their diet. And maybe yes. some of those ideas that you could give to our mothers mm -hmm. out there of how they can just be creative with their diet. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, ensure that your diet has vegetables. Regardless, the, the man in the village eats better than the person living in Nairobi today. Why? They are eating their gideri if you are a kikuyu. You have your beans and maize and they have thrown in some pumpkin leaves. That's a complete balanced diet. Have your vegetables with whatever meal you're having. Have your proteins. Your proteins don't have to come from meat. We have uh, beans and dengu, uh, uh, peas. They are all uh, pro sources of protein. And an egg is a source of, a source of protein and have your carbohydrates. Your diet should mm, largely, I'm not a nutritionist, but your diet should largely be the vegetables, the proteins, and the carbohydrates is a smaller proportion. Is a smaller proportion. Yes. Um, we talked about other infections that one may get because of this particular conditions, mm -hmm. and I know one of them would be ENT. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you would get infections in the uh, ear, nose, and throat. Are there others that possibly one would get as a result of this condition, cleft lip and uh, palate? Uh, some of these patients are syndromic, meaning they have other conditions other than uh, cleft lip, other than the cleft lip, and when the doctors assess, they are able to tell whether the patient has a problem with the heart, or some may have uh, other congenital malformations like club foot occurring together with the cleft lip. Um, ear, nose, and throat infections are the most common due to cleft lip, mainly because of the physical aspect of it. It's mm -hmm. an open airway jams are going in straight up. Okay, and uh, with Smile Train, which um, takes care of this free of charge, mm -hmm. is that specifically for children? Is there an age group that you take care of? We do not have an age group. Why? We are still dealing with a backlog in Kenya. We are still treating adults. We still have 20. Yesterday I was informed of a 20-year-old patient who is in Kajiado. Mm -hmm. We still have grown-ups who are living with a cleft. We should not have that. And we are working so hard to ensure that we eliminate that. And we are treating children as young as possible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our target is to have the babies as young as possible. But if you come to us with a cleft lip or cleft palate, whatever your age and your fit for surgery, you will be corrected. Is this a regular thing that happens throughout or is it based on camps? It's regular in the, all the 18 partner hospitals, hospitals that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. If you walk in, they will book you for surgery as soon as possible. The camps happen to reach out to those hard to reach areas that we don't have. We do not have ongoing partnerships. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, one of the challenges I know that you have with any free uh, service mm -hmm. is the numbers mm -hmm. and waiting time. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the, what's the general waiting time one would be looking at from the time you now register or begin the process? Mm -hmm. We are blessed to have uh, dedicated hospitals that are our partners and they have prioritized cleft mm -hmm. and therefore they, we do not have a long waiting time. In the government hospital, as we know, they are, the government uh, system is dogged with so many primary health care problems and there is competition for theater space and all that, you may have a little longer waiting time, but it will not go beyond a week. They will admit you and the next avail available theater space is maybe on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So you will wait for one week for the surgery to be done. But rarely will you be sent home unless there is a medical reason why you are being sent home, like your, heat, your blood is low or your weight is low then you will have a longer waiting time because you have to have that corrected for the safety of the patient. And now you talked about uh, Smile Train taking care of this. Do they take care of just the surgery or are there other costs, you know, like you may need to be hospitalized for a day or two just mm -hmm. for observation. Mm -hmm. There's the medication that comes along. Do they take care of that whole bill or is it just the surgery bit? The whole bill. In, out, complete. You pay nothing. The whole bill is taken care of. Is that uh, for a certain economic uh, group or is it for anyone? Is that open to anyone that comes in? It's open to anyone who is unable to afford the surgery. Having limited resources, we are f focusing on the people who need the help. Of course, the cleft, like recently I was on a, um, at a meeting somewhere and I was just 
chatting with somebody and they told me, oh, by the way, my child has a cleft, had a cleft. And we went into how it was repaired and the child was repaired at Aga Khan Hospital. That's not a patient who is um, a candidate for smile train because they do not need the help. They can afford it. They can afford it. Mm -hmm. So this is for the poor patients who cannot, without the help of smile train, their cleft would never be repaired. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about establishing that somebody actually needs it? Or okay, qualifies, I think is the right word. Um, if a patient is coming to you when they're 20 years old and mm -hmm. they have lived with that cleft for 20 years, mm -hmm. what is the likelihood that they could have afforded it when they were three months old? That's one. Two, the areas where they're coming from, right from the way the patient presents themselves, right mm -hmm. from the fact that they're calling us for help, tells you. And the proportion of Kenyans who are living below poverty line and the condition is occurring in the poor economic status mm -hmm. patients, yes. Okay. So many of our patients are, do need. Christina is uh, asking about an invisible pallet. What is an invisible pallet? What of, what, what of the invisible pallet? Is there something like an invisible pallet? I have not heard of an invisible pallet. Mm -hmm. uh, it, unless that means the pallet did not develop at all. I have not come across that. Okay. Uh, there's also another question here that uh, somebody got turned down when they went to mm -hmm. uh, a hospital in Nakuru. Again, unfortunately, they've not mentioned which hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, but should somebody be turned down, wh where do they turn to? Who do they ask? Who'd, you know, when you walk into a hospital, mm -hmm. there's this huge organization and you want a specific service. Mm -hmm. Who do you ask for? Is there a desk? Mm -hmm. uh, cleft lip is very visual. And our partners, the whole hospital knows when a patient comes with a cleft lip, this is a route to go. This is a channel, you channel them for them to access the free surgery. And the information is available in the hospitals. So when a patient goes, presents themselves to a partner hospital, uh, I would have loved to know which hospital that was, when they go to a partner hospital, they will not be turned away because the systems have been put in place by our partners to ensure that those patients are received and channeled through the proper process to but access But evidently there's a challenge there because she said she was turned away. And again, you mm -hmm. may go for an inquiry whereby it's not you who has a cleft lip. Uh -huh. It might be somebody else. So as much as it's visual, uh -huh. uh, they, you may just want information so that you now bring the patient. Okay. Where does one start? Um, talk to us. Talk to Smile Train. We are available all the time and we will give you the proper information mm -hmm. yes are you in all the counties not all the counties there are the counties where we are not in that's where we are doing the cleft camps so that mm -hmm. we are able to reach the patients without them having to, tra to travel long distances to get to our partners okay and how many people roughly are you able to treat for instance in a week you say that the waiting time would be in a week mm -hmm. how many people would you be looking at treating in all the different areas that you are in that one week I would not be able to give you in a week. When we are doing a cleft camp, mm -hmm. in one week we are able to treat between 30 and 40 patients. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about, because the program is ongoing, every single day, right now as we are seated here, there could be a surgery happening somewhere and we are, as we are seated here. In a year we are able to treat close to a thousand patients across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. That's the number that I can give. Uh, around a thousand. Yes. All right, just general information that people should know about cleft lip, maybe as we wind up, mm -hmm. uh, just for people to know that this is happening, it is accessible mm -hmm. and nobody needs to suffer at home. Because one of the other things that blocks people from coming is thinking, It's just my child. Mm -hmm. It's just me. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one. You're not the only one. There are one thousand two hundred there are about patients being born in Kenya every year. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are s uh, find they feel it's their it's only them. But when they get to their to our partner hospitals and they meet other patients, they are also surprised that they are actually there. The the thing is, most of these patients are hidden away. You will never walk in the streets and meet a patient walking around with a cleft lip or cleft palate. Right. But when you give out the information and the people start coming out, then you realize how many they are. Mm -hmm. They are there. They are in their homes. It's our job, you and me and everybody watching, to spread the information. Tell people Smile Train is here. Smile Train is in our hospitals. We are funding cleft lip and palate surgery. It's free of charge. No hidden costs. No ulterior motives. 
and we are here to help. Mm. Yes. You've mentioned something quite uh, significant and important, and that is the fact that you will not find many mm -hmm. cleft lift, uh, cleft lip um, patients walking mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. and that is because they are hidden. Yes. How do we deal with the fact that sometimes we feel like uh, society mm -hmm. puts certain people in certain clusters, this being one of them? It's a, an uphill task that we are all geared up to tackle. It's demystifying the condition. It's working to show people that it has been corrected. It can be corrected. It's an act of God. It's not uh, something that the mother did. It's not a curse. Mm -hmm. And basically getting the patients to come to the hospitals, mm -hmm. getting them in, reaching that patient who is in Budalangi and has never had access to a TV and has never had, it's holding hands with the government, holding hands with everybody who is working in healthcare and reaching those patients with this information. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Esther Njoroge. I know you gave us the number and we've been displaying it, but maybe you can uh, just give us uh, the, the, your Twitter handle mm -hmm. and other avenues that we can get in touch with you. Yes. Should somebody be watching and the one to watch, I mean, to, to get in touch, how do they do that? We are on Facebook, uh, Smile Train Africa is the page. We are on Twitter, Smile Train Africa at Smart on Africa. The Africa a is, is uh, just Africa without the A. Without the A, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And my personal handle is Esther underscore Njoroge. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Esther Njoroge. Thank Regional you. Director for Smile Train. And in case you're at home and uh, you have a patient who has got cleft lip or you know somebody who cannot afford and maybe the reason why uh, they've, they've stayed at home with that condition, cleft lip and palate, is because they cannot afford. Well, guess what? Smile Train is there to put that smile on your face. And we've given you the contacts and uh, uh, they're still scrolling on your screen, so uh, get in touch. Well, that's where we're going to wind up our Morning Express this morning, uh, but we'll also so give you a traffic update as we wind up and for those of us on KTN home I'll wish you a wonderful and a great day and continue enjoying the rest of your viewing. KTN News, we've got the 9 o'clock news bulletin coming up right here on News Center. For, so from us here at Morning Express team, we want to say a goodbye as uh, we see the cameras there. It looks misty uh, from here. I'm not sure if it's uh, the weather or uh, that is smoke. It actually looks smoky if you ask me. I don't know if that, that's clouds or it's smoke but nevertheless it seems like the roundabout has opened up and it is flowing this is the kenyatta avenue roundabout and that's a traffic right there hopefully soon we'll be able to bring you pictures from different areas and different angles so that we keep you posted otherwise from us here on the morning express and a team that is dedicated to make sure that this happens every single morning we wish you all a fantastic and a wonderful day god bless